Hi there, I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman. This is a 21st Century Superhuman show. And today I have with me Mudik, my husband, my partner, and the man who is doing the audiobooks of 21st Century Superhuman, translating them into Spanish. CC. And doing the Spanish audiobooks. That's quite a superhuman feat. Thank you, thank you. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches to everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and highest blessings to all. How are you today? I'm awesome. Yeah. I love my life. Man, this is amazing. Look where we are. <laughs> where are we? We are in the construct. <laughs> so we are waking up in the matrix and let us talk about what that means. Is this cool or what? It is there's super cool. Neo, there's Morpheus, and here we are. Wow. We can create anything we want. Anything we want. What we believe, what we feel, what we think, we create. So it's a good thing to focus on what you want and not what you don't want. No kidding. <laughs> Let me read really quickly a quote from book two, which I'm in the final edit of for the third edition right now. Um, we've done upgrades, updates, third edition. The third edition will have a gold seal on the front and this one will be out on Amazon pretty quick. It is so good. Book two, mine. So applicable to today. It's yes. Unbelievable. Love it. We are immersed in a field of fast moving energy that is continuously reshaping itself. The field yields moving electrons to our thought. The instant we change, matter and events change. Breathing and smiling, this is why we say breathe and smile. We resonate reality into being from a new place of formless, timeless essence flowing through the heart as love. Big Aho. responsibility, huh? Oh, I love it. Yes. So this Morpheus tells Neo that this is a training simulation, right? Right. This is his first time after he's been awakened. This is his first time into what he thinks could be the matrix. And so he's plugged in and he's like, okay, where are we? And Morpheus says, this is the construct. Uh, it's like the matrix, but they use it like a training program and they can load anything into their, whatever they're gonna use into their anime, if you would, uh, in, before they go into the matrix. But this is a simulation, a simulated place. Look at this. I have a glass of blue green algae here, water here. However, I can also put it over in so in the simulation, I mean, I can put it into the construct, right? Right. And so it's only showing up because my hand is behind it. It's only showing up because I am behind it, because my Ooh. thought is upon it. Ooh. It's here. We can put it over into <laughs> the construct. Right. Or we can put some attention upon it. And now we have a glass of blue-green algae water. That is so cool. Wow. Now, what does that mean and how you can bring things in from right. what their does that thoughts mean? into reality and you can bring it into what, well, of course, reality is in quotation marks and, and or into the matrix, into our environment, into our hologram, into our make-believe reality or a very fancy, very fancy hologram. We live in the coolest hologram oh. in the universe, I think. This is so delicious. I'm so glad I can <laughs> bring it into the dimension where I actually am and I can taste it. It's really good. I can feel it giving me new brain cells and strengthening my body. And we have a little video on this at the 21st Century Superhuman website under products. And of course, in this same scene with Morpheus and Neo, he explains to him, because, you know, Neo grabs the chairs and stuff and he says, so this isn't real. And Morpheus says, well, what is real? It's just the elect electrical impulses in your brain telling you about taste, smell, color, uh, you know, your five senses. It's just, it's just your brain interpreting signals in the environment around you into something that you can recognize. That's a big thing to comprehend. It's a brain twister. <laughs> I remember when there was a kid's book out a uh, number of years ago called The Velveteen Rabbit. Let me just read something from that really quick by Marjorie Williams. 
And this is a pretty famous quote. I remember this quote and really liking it, but I understand it a lot differently today. Let's hear it. The velveteen rabbit asks the skin horse how toys become real. The skin horse replies, real isn't how you are made. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Mm. And wow, this is really how our thoughts work in this construct. When we focus on something over and over and over and over, and it's our daily mental chatter, we end up holding that event, that person, that circumstance, that situation mm -hmm. in form. And it's what we are going to see in the system around us. So what you're saying, using the construct with Morpheus and Neo as an example, um, they ask the operator to download things to them. So basically right. you're saying that we are also our own operator that downloads things to us when we ask for it, request it. And how do we request it and ask for it? We focus on it. We give our attention to it over and over and over again, That's or right. even better, passionately. What you give your attention to passionately, you're asking the operator to download into your reality. And it, and it comes like that. Well, and one of the things that I'm going over and over in book two, which is really good, book two mind of the 21st century superhuman books, is that we also have, we're like an iceberg. So we have this little tip that's above water level. Mm -hmm. And Harvard studies tell us 95% of our thought is unconscious. And this is really even taught about in the ancient Aramaic with Yeshua or Jesus. He taught about this. And in the ancient Aramaic, it says that they didn't even have an understanding then for the unconscious. Like just now, we have an understanding for it. And the Aramaic is really kind of a quantum language and it's teaching about us as if we were a biocomputer and we have to clean out that old data, mm -hmm. which is shebag, remove, clean out, clear. And unless we clear or cancel this old data, it is actually going to be vibrating more strongly than our conscious thought. So what does that mean? Well, so what you're saying is then, that the tip of the iceberg is your conscious thought right. and the water and the, and the iceberg below the water, which is even more of it, it's a huge mass, is your subconscious. And so that part is the part that's really running the show, the, show, the direction that you're going to be floating or going, or if you're, if you're choosing to have a purpose, uh, the, the, the direction that you are, that you're going. In. Right. So say I have a thought, which is, I decide today I'm, I'm going to manifest. I decide I'm going to get a lot of money. I'm going to have a lot okay. of money. Okay, so that's a really common thing. People feel like right. I can manifest something. I can manifest a house. I can manifest a relationship. So in my conscious mind, I'm going to say, I'm going to have this. It's going to come to me. And yet we have 95% in our unconscious that comes from our generations, our grandparents, our great grandparents, many eons of human history. And those can have anything from I'm not worthy to right. I don't deserve it. To I was just a poor farmer to, you know, making money is hard. You have to be smart. You're not smart. Any of the, any of millions of things that we have. So offer. say all that is clamoring around down in our unconscious and it is working on this construct to resonate into being certain things. Right, they're old programs. Right. They're old programs still running, um, kind of like when you stack your screens up. That's right. When you stack your screens up on the computer, the, they're all still running, but even though they're in the background. And so these Very old good. programs are still running in the subconscious, in the bottom of the iceberg, but they're still running. So how do we, how do we clear them? That's right. So we just use a process. One of the reasons we say breathe, smile, and love is because we breathe. We actually literally activate filters in the frontal lobe and the back of our brain. In the Aramaic, they're called rachma and kuba. We, by smiling, we activate a filter of intentions of love. And in the back of the brain, we activate a filter 
for perceptions of love. This gets pretty complicated. We're not going to go into all those details today because that they're in the book. too much. Right. But they're in the book, yes. So, but what we want to do is notice what comes up when I say I'm going to get a lot of money in my bank account or whatever. And maybe under there is like an uncomfortable feeling of, ooh, can I really get that? Or can that really happen? Or when is that going to happen? And we can just cancel, release, and let that go. We can allow ourselves to feel it and say, I feel my uncomfortable feelings. Now, what might be more apparent, and I think what I really want to apply this to is the world feels pretty upside down right now. Like, yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, like I've got a favorite saying lately um, in the little village we live in, which is, El mundo es loco. <laughs> The world is a little bit crazy. It's not right? a cabeza. It's upside down. See, it's upside down. So as the world is kind of upside down, there's a lot going on that's really different than we ever expected it to be from, you know, chaos in the streets, viruses, people wearing masks, all kinds of right. craziness. And I like to focus on how to be the calm in the center of that hurricane how to be that bubble of peace, of oneness, of presence in that turmoil. And not only is it possible, it's wonderful. Yes, <laughs> it's and awesome. what's really important is we need to become aware of what are we focusing on? Are we focusing on the chaos? Do we have fear inside of us because of it? Are we a little uncomfortable about what could be going on? Um, and, it, those are the things that do tend to run the show. It's those things that are under the surface. So it's really important as we feel like we call them uncomfy Ks, uncomfortable kinesthetics, as we feel things under the surface, we want to be sure to acknowledge those and cancel, release, and let those go. As we right. cancel, release, and let those go, we can say, instead of saying, I'm going to focus on this chaos, I'm going to focus on this challenge, I'm going to focus on what might happen, instead, I'm going to focus on seeing a better world emerging from this. And some might say that, oh, that's irresponsible. You know, what would you say to that? Well, I would say that you're, you're, we think that our past is unmovable, and, but it's actually our perception of the past that can be changed. We also think that what's outside of this is unmovable. We think right, it's right. really That's true. out there. That's true. We don't think that it is being created by the resonance inside of us and us a collective. Right. But what I was getting at was that that feeling that you get that when, when you say, I want to do X, Y, or Z, and you get a something feeling, you can actually follow that feeling to its source. Um, constellation work does that it's really well and it's it's showing up in your body so you can focus on where that is where it is really get into the feeling allow yourself in a safe place to feel that feeling and then ask yourself when's the first time i felt that and you will get this video go through your mind and zip like it like a like a fishing line will take you right to the first time and you get the exact image and what you can do in the present is observe yourself there see what the situation was from your present knowledge now, from the wisdom that you hold now. And maybe mom, dad, teacher, minister was having a bad lifetime that day. And you can go, hey, they didn't really mean it, but I took it on myself and it's still here. And you know what? I, I don't need to take that on. I can release that from that little child. I can love that little child now, bring him with me and we can be healed together. And now I don't have that past hurt. So we can change the past, but we're really changing our perception of our past in a whole new way. And so what, is, what it seems to be truth isn't true anymore. And what was true or what wasn't true can be true. So, you know, we can change our exterior by changing ourselves. And that's really the whole point. We can't change the exterior, but we can change ourselves. Through, through our hearts. Well, through and the sense. truth is, when we change ourselves, the exterior changes. That's right. And that we really have to know that. It's a, it's a whole new education process um, that as we change ourselves on the inside, literally the outside changes. This is why the monks went and sat in the cave and meditated, because they knew that sending peace into the world from a state of peace 
would help bring about peace. And the more of us who can get this right now, the more we can be sending from that breathing, smiling state, from our heart of love, the more we can be sending those things into the world. I see my children joyful. I see us having free healthcare choices. I see us, and I have people write me, just to mention also, we've had a lot of censoring going on lately. And I will oh, say, right. you know, okay, I have that in my unconscious and I'm resonating that in my world. Um, I'm finding that I'm having to dance around what I can actually say because there's a lot of shutting down going on. But I just choose to stay in the place where I can see an open path. And for instance, on my um, 21st Century Superhuman group on Facebook now, I can't ever see more than one or two posts at the top. Like I used to be able to go and monitor what was on that page. Mm -hmm. Now it's just not even visible. It hasn't been for weeks. And, Amazing. Um, yeah. And, and um, so it's interesting. And yet I just keep going inside and saying, how do I dance with this? How do I dance? How do I see it as we're going to move through this? We are going through the mm -hmm. great shift of the agents. Mm -hmm. We are going through the great awakening. Yes. And many minds are waking up. Yes. Many hearts are waking up. And so we have this sort of like chaotic resonance going on in the collective, a really neat image that I love. Well, we're going through, we're going through the great remodel. You know, this is, yes. this is the big remodel of the earth. And I mean, sometimes when there's a remodel, there's dust. The there's, there's dust, there's dust, there's, you find stuff behind walls it's that's been there for years, the things surfacing that you had no idea were in those dark, deep, wet, nasty places, right. and you got to get them out. Sometimes the, the, the woods rotted and you need to clear it out and it's messy. And that's what we're going through now. But that's because we're going through the great, like you said, the great shift of the ages, but we're coming out of that galactic night. Yes. And we're coming into the galactic day. And just as assuredly as day follows night, this is happening. This is occurring. We're seeing it in front of us. But if you look at the turmoil, you're looking at the rotten wood. And some people have that job of tearing out the rotten wood, uh, taking care of the cockroaches, and other people um, are doing something else. You're, you're, you're cleaning out some other closet, you're sweeping. Uh, other people are up in the top of the tower holding the frequency of the new house, of the new earth. And we each have our job, we each have our puzzle piece. So the main thing is to do our puzzle piece and to be ourselves and follow our hearts. And it's gonna be new. And there's gonna be rocks in your backpack. There's going to be things that you find that you don't like. There's going to be things that, that are old programs that you need to learn how to, how to clear up. And that's the whole purpose of, of right now. Living a purpose, cleaning out your backpack. That's great. <laughs> and I think we need to be able to look at each person as being on their own perfect journey. You know, instead of looking at each other and going, oh, why are you there? Or to be critical of each other. Instead... Let's look at each other and see that each person is in their own perfect, divinely unfolding process. And wherever they are, whatever they're focused upon, and in a way, they are us. One of the images yes. I love from book two is I talk about um, a whirlpool in the river. Remember, when you're canoeing or kayaking, there can be an eddy in the river, and it it's when the water goes around, spins around, and it creates a focal point. And that is, we are the river, we are the ocean, and we are the ocean in the drop. We are the river, and we are the river in the whirlpool. When we're focused in upon ourselves and our own way of doing and being, we're like the little whirlpool in the river. And then when we open up and embrace ourselves as part of the whole, we're like the whole river flowing. So it's like you can get trapped in the eddy. Is that what you're saying? You can get caught in an eddy by thinking on one thing and the idea is to get back out into the flow of the great river. You could use it that way. Okay. Yeah. And, or either one to, I, I know that I'm focused sometimes and know that sometimes I am one with the all. So it's okay to be the eddy. Yeah. It's okay to be the eddy. Okay. Gotcha. It's okay to be focused internally and then it's okay to become realizing that we're part of this whole great change that's happening. There may be some realization that you need to learn from the eddy. Um, yes. And that's all good. Certainly. That's all good too, of course. Yeah. Beautiful. So I want to remind everyone um, to 
always come into your own center, always come into your inner stillness. If you can have a meditation practice, on a daily basis, or maybe for you walking is meditation, maybe yoga is meditation, um, maybe putting on some um, spiritual music is meditation. Um, but we want to see if we can create a harmonizing vibration inside of ourselves. And even that, this great movement of light coming into the planet that NASA talks about <clears throat> is literally pushing all this booga booga stuff to the surface yes. you know the, booga booga. the dust in the walls the the old genetic thought forms and right. patterns that people are in the streets yelling about and people are getting arrested about and human trafficking is surfacing. obsolete programs yeah you know and it's not like we're going to be you know like the smiths and the the the, the what are they called that come and, and delete the obsolete programs but in one sense we do we do need to clean out and lovingly and because they serve their purpose. They had a moment in our lives and we honor that. And as these frequencies are rising on the planet, there's also something called a stopgap rising up along with them, which means that the frequencies are not going to be allowed to go below that anymore. And so these frequencies, like these things that we've experienced that have been in the darkness, that have been lower frequencies, are not going to be able to happen anymore. And so one aspect of that is loving them, honoring the, the uh, experience for, for what it was and for what it is, and for the knowledge that you gained from it. And so there's also kind of a, a mourning of that, of that galactic night that will be no more. Thankfully, it will be no more, and with gratitude and with love. And so it's an interesting perspective to love everything even our darkest moments, yes. um, because it's the wisdom that we will take with us into the future and into, into the new earth, into our galactic community, into our universal community. And that experience and wisdom will sh step us out, will, will shine us forth as wiser beings because of that experience. I mean, we're gonna meet galactic beings that go, whoa, I can see from your frequency. You came from Earth, you went, I'm, just, I'm getting goosebumps as I'm saying this, that, that's a confirmation. Like you say, you can, oh, it's like those two girls that do that to love Oh, them. I love that. Yeah. That's what it's like, you it's like, what? You did that? Yes, I did. It was tough, but we made it through it, and, and it's awesome, it's beautiful now. Right, so what we know with this light pouring into the planet is, that which has been in the shadows can no longer exist in the shadows. The light is coming in and shedding light where before there was only darkness. Mm -hmm. And as these things surface, we need to bless them, we need to clear them. And most of all, when we see something in the outer that's horrendous, we also need to clear from within ourselves. Say, right. what inside of me? And in the book, we talk about blame, judgment, um, fear, hostility, fear, hostility control. and control. Mm -hmm. So some of the really subtle ones, it's easy, blame and um, hostility are, and even control are kind of, and fear are pretty obvious, okay, I'm in fear. But judgment is another one. It's another Ouch. one of those dark energies and it's really easy to have judgment on those evil people out there. Oh my God, they did this, oh, they did that. And judgment is another one mm -hmm. of those subtle, less than love emotions and i remember when it's I really first, me when i'm pointing at someone it, it's me yes i'm pointing at me when you point that's at somebody a, else that's a there's twin, a brain three twister. fingers pointing back at you it's right? a brain twister but it's a good one yes. too because you you love who you see you love as yourself do you recognize do you speak to that person as the divinity within you yes and the matrix can only mirror that which we give it these are big things to comprehend. We don't get them in a second or an hour, but we ask you to join us on this walk of mastery and make this your walk of mastery. To breathe, to smile, to release your own unconscious data, 95% unconscious data that's resonating in the field, that's keeping thousands of generations of darkness um, alive here in the external of which there it, there is really a mirroring. And so we're gonna ask you to join us on this walk of mastery and begin clearing yourself. Mm -hmm. Cancel, release, and let go. Anytime anything comes up mm -hmm. to love yourself, love the person, love the situation. And envision 
practice envisioning what you really choose to come into being. So when something comes up that's negative and dark, it's an opportunity for us to cancel, release, and let go. Right. It's like your sea cleaner. That's it's right. a, a program on PCs called Sea Cleaner. It used to be called Crap Cleaner. Wow. And they changed it up to Sea Cleaner. And that's what it is. It would clean out old programs, leftover cache, memory, things like that, uh, internet navigating um, streams or streaks, whatever the word is. And, um, and it would clean out old programs and things like that. And so the more you use it, the more quickly it will come up. And, and so by recognizing something immediately and loving it and saying, okay, where's the source of that? I love it. I release it. And, and then the next thing you know, you don't even remember that it's whatever it was you were thinking about. That's how quick it is. And your life is cleaner, clearer, really miraculous. Well, since you brought that up, yes. let me mention, um, in the ancient Aramaic is another word, and it's called Ruka de Kucha. Mm. Ruka de Kucha was translated because nobody understood what it meant. It was translated as the Holy Spirit. We love the Holy Spirit. We love the spirit of divine consciousness that surrounds us, the spirit of God, of source energy. However, Ruka de Kucha was like the virus cleaner. It, you can call in Ruka and say, please defrag my computer please clean out all this old garbage so know that there is help there's help on a on a divine level the divine level of our making as we projected in here as beings into this construct into this uh, matrix oh. into this hologram there is divine help that says i can clean out and defrag that computer for you. I can clean out that old viral content. Just call upon Ruka de Kucha. And um, even if you can't remember the word, you can say Holy Spirit. Just call it sea cleaner. Yeah, call it sea cleaner. <laughs> uh, but know that there is help to get that cleaned out. And yes. so let's be really aware. We're kind of like a biocomputer and it's pretty mm -hmm. basic and simple. Clean out the garbage. Put out some good code. Enjoy, Upgrade the operating system. Enjoy your clean way of walking. It's 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 a walk of mastery and step by step and have fun. The you know let's stop taking ourselves so seriously and have fun with it and it'll be easier to let go uh, yeah. instead of holding on so tight to things. We're gonna read a really beautiful quote um, from this weekend about oh, yeah. this walk in this world. And before we do that, let me just mention, so the third edition of 21st Century Superhuman, which is called Book One, Shift of the Ages by Carrie Curastar Ellis. It's kind of a long thing to put up on, to look for on Amazon. I'll put it under here, but it is now available in English and Spanish, in paperback and Kindle, I believe, I'm not sure if the Spanish audiobook is up yet. We're still waiting for ACX, Amazon's arm, to get um, the audiobook. We've been waiting about four weeks, the audiobook um, for English visible. Um, but I'll put the links underneath this video as it gets done. This video will also go over to YouTube. If someone wants to listen to it in Spanish, they can use the CC, the closed captions, and choose their auto translate for YouTube, which really helps people of other languages. There's like 50 languages in there. And we love being part of a global community and knowing that people can actually, once our videos are up on YouTube, and so I'll put our, our YouTube channel under here, um, 21st Century Superhuman. Um, we're also in Instagram. We're also in Twitter. We're also going into Parler and some of these other alternative feeds. So, estoy, estoy pensando si el traductor funciona en español, if the translator works in Spanish too. Yes. <laughs> so that happens in YouTube. But so write and tell me if it does. So we'll load this video both places. We love you all. And we want to remind you to breathe, smile, and love. And Marek, you can go ahead and read this cool quote, and we okay. shall see you all soon. Thank you, thank you. Yes, this comes from Adama of Telos, coming through, oh, I had her name at the beginning, Asara Adams in Mount Shasta. We thank you, and this is beautiful. Greetings, beloved ones. We are most joyous to, get, to connect with you here today, and we send you our utmost love from the heart of Telos. As you are in between worlds, it is so very important to become comfortable with the quietness of this stage 
as the world transitions into a new era. Many beloved souls are excited about what is to come and are concerned with what the illusion is trying to make them feel. Instead, stillness is crucial right now. As very important energy updates are being integrated into your being to prepare you for the next stage. Your DNA and RNA messenger codes are being fully activated. Vast amounts of old beliefs, pains, and discord are being released. Your physical, emotional, mental, and etheric bodies are being shifted into the next vibrational level. You are receiving light codes of divine perfection. Most importantly, you have been preparing for this shift over many lifetimes, and now it is time to apply everything you have learned with the sincerity of your heart. Everything you have learned about manifesting and that your focus creates your reality. Everything you have learned about the love of source and that you are an expression of source. Everything you have learned about the fact that you are indeed a creator of your reality. Apply these principles with the fullness of your heart's inner knowing. The more you go inward and withdraw your attention from the illusion of your old world, the more you can begin to truly feel the love and power of source that is flowing through you. This allows you to create new connections to the divine new earth every time you can feel these energies. Try to hold this feeling of source love in your heart for as long as you can, as often as you can. It will create a powerful momentum and you will move through these changes with ease and grace. We champion your victory in the light. Welcome home. We send you all so much love. You are carried on the wings of angels to bring forth the new earth. Know in your heart that you are always surrounded by your angels, ascended masters, guides, galactic families of light, and yes, also by your family and friends in Telos, and always will be. Dear ones, we are walking with you on this journey, and you are loved beyond measure, always. I am your brother Adama of Telos. Mm, so nice. Many blessings all. So Bravo. much love. And um, we just want to remind you, walk of mastery. Remember to breathe. Smile and love. Share this with your friends. Like our YouTube channel. Pass it on. Encourage others to be the light that they are in this world. Highest love. Highest blessings. We are doing this. Yes, we are. <laughs> okay, ciao. Ciao, ciao.